Good day guys, uh, Austin here and in this guide or tutorial I'm going to just teach you a few tips and tricks which I've picked up along the way and although they might be small they may make huge impacts on your setup. I know they, uh, well it's the bare minimum on mine so well I'm going to spread on the knowledge anyway. I'm going to make this one quick, most of my tutorials are massive and I end up rambling on for ages. I'm going to try and cut that out as much as I can on this one because it's, it's just bare bones information. So let's get stuck in. Okay, I'm going to put a link in the description to a quick download. It's basically just a, a text file and then there's some information uh, which we can use. So let's get through it then. Okay, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to edit some of your front end kind of stuff to try and make it blend in with your theme a little more. Um, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to open up my working hyperspin, the one that I'm working on at the moment, and I'm going to show you in the bottom left hand corner, there's, as you scroll through the games, you'll be able to see some text. This text is basically the year and the make of the actual game and the name of the game itself. Um, with each theme that I go to, I like to change the colours, uh, some people also like to change the style, but I like to keep the same style but just change the colours, just so it blends in with the theme a little more. It's not a huge change, but it's enough to just make it look less out of place, and also it, well basically, it, it blends with my theme a lot more. Where it's placed is where I want it. The colours that it uses is the colours that I want and the style is the style that I want so basically as I'm scrolling through my systems everything looks as if it's supposed to be there rather than just uh, slapped on with some information again something that you don't normally get from uh, <laughs> these drives that you buy and remember do not buy drives do not buy drives unless you want to just spunk money up the wall okay anyway enough rambling here we go Right, I'm going to load this up, take a note in the bottom left hand corner, as we're rolling through the games, you probably won't be able to see me, uh, sorry, hear me while I'm scrolling through, so I'm going to stop talking as I'm rolling through. Here we go. So there you go, it's just a quick demo there. In the bottom left hand corner, if you didn't see it, rewind a little bit. But below the video, there's a little text that basically tells you the name of the game, the year and the, the developer of it basically. Um, but as standard it comes as silver, some kind of silvery blue. It's in the wrong place and it just looks ugly. So <laughs> nobody actually tells you this, you have to dig around for it. So I'm just going to do this quick one. Right, in the download that I give you, you will see this text. Um, this is basically the file or the settings file within Hyperspin that tells it how to be for each system. Now all you need to do is take yourself to your install. So in my case it's the D drive, it's Hyperspin. Now within Hyperspin you'll see a folder, it's called settings. Go into the and in the settings file you see a little uh, any file for every system that you've got running installed on your system at the moment um, so say for example which one I haven't set up properly yet um, I'll go for MAME because I don't think I've done that one even though it's the most important um, in my MAME setup then we click on that one the any file yeah, it'll take a while for it to probably open up, it's got to spool the drive Ooh. 
no. All right. For some reason, it's gone straight there. I must have tried to edit it in the past. No, I don't want to edit it. Right. So we'll start again, just so you know what's going on. Um, double click it. It should then open up. Right. You'll be greeted with this one. Uh, this is basically the ini file itself. I'm opening this in Notepad++. Uh, you can do it in text editor, whatever you want. However, I do it in Notepad++. It's exactly the same information. It's just laid out in nice colours. Um, right. So all you need to do is open it up, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll have this field called text, uh, game text, as you can see there, and as you can see as I've written mine. All of this is is a template, so it makes it easier for you to do. So, right. All I'm going to do is delete everything that's there and press delete. Okay, keep the cursor where it is there, and then all I need to do is go over to my text document, copy everything that's there, copy, place that where that one was. Okay, and now we've got that to some kind of unified setup. So, how do I edit this then? Basically, I want to keep most of the stuff exactly the same because I want it all to be generic in every system that I go through. However, I do want to change the colours. So, as you can see, I'll close out of this and we'll bring that one up to the front. As you can see, the text colour, so you've got game text, text colour 1, text colour 2 and stroke colour. Text colour 1 is basically you can have the colours blending from one colour to the next underneath. Now you can play around with this as much as you want depending on what system you want to play with. Um, and so number one will be the top colour or the top half of the text and number two will be the bottom half of the text and it's going to blend in between. The stroke colour is a colour which outlines all the fonts or text that's on your theme. So you could have, I don't know, red blended into blue however it's surrounded by a white line. Um, that's basically <laughs> as simple as it gets but as you can see you don't just write blue or yellow orange or whatever you've actually got to put in the what they call HTML code uh, HTML color code now as you can see it's not simple by just looking at that some people might be able to identify what kind of colors we're looking at there however I can't <laughs> I had some kind of training to do with uh, art stuff so what we're going to do is we're going to translate that. So the best way to do is go to a website such as this one, uh, HTML color codes. If you put in HTML color codes into Google, it's going to come up with a site like this or something very similar. You should have some kind of um, little GUI like this within the website, and this is actually interactive. So as I choose a color, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner I get a code so for MAME let's think about what will go with MAME it's a very um, I don't know because I'm using themes rather than a theme for each game rather than a theme for the overall look um, I can choose probably whatever colour I want so I'm gonna go quite bright to be honest so I'm thinking um, I don't know something that's going to impact. Why not use like me avatar kind of thing. So I'm going to go uh, where should I go? I'm going to go red just for an example. So red copy so choosing red you can choose your colour here. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to go green. So you choose the colour that you want and the shade that you want then within there you can choose by dragging this little icon around whether you want it dark, light and then or the actual colour itself just scroll around find a colour that you think is preferable to you so I'm going to choose that one a nice bright green I'm going to copy that so basically I just click onto that highlight it all right click copy then go over to your little file that you had open before and I'm going to scroll that into the first one so I'm going to basically highlight everything after the 0x and then you should have a code. The code is 6 um, letters long or 6 places long and I'm just going to highlight them all and press paste and now I've put the code which I copied from here and I've overwritten the one that's already there. So I know at the top of the text now is going to read colour 1, uh, sorry, it's going to be green. Now what I want to do, I want to keep green but I want it to fade darker at the bottom. I don't want it to go too dark but I want it to show some kind of difference. Just so it gives like a, 
a shiny kind of look to it. Yeah, obviously you can go from one colour to the other, but in this instance I'm just going to go like a shiny colour. A shiny green, should I say. So, same thing again for colour 2. Uh, paste. So there we go, I've got that and that. And on the stroke colour, that's the colour that's going to surround it. So, I'm going to choose... Um, I'll probably go with a light or dark. And I'm going to choose black. Yeah, we'll go black. Why not? Eh? It's only a demo, just so you can see what's going on. So, stroke color, paste, and there we go. Now I've done uh, light green into dark green, surrounded by black. Now you can play with the other settings as much as you want. Uh, you got the style types, I think there's something where up to four or five different styles, change that if you wish. It's just a different version of the font. The actual text size itself, the text one, I believe is the like name and year of the make. This one is, uh, sorry, the different sizes. Just have a play, you know, these settings are there. Just make sure you've, you've already got it backed up on your other system, so you can't really mess it up too much. Um, all I do is change these. I've got an overall look that, or theme that I like. All I want to do from each system is just change the colours to match the theme of the system. But you can change as much as you like. So that's how you do that one. Obviously when you've finished or you feel you've got as far as you want to go and give it a try, click save at the top. Then you can exit out of there. And then all you need to do is load up your system. Now I just edited the one that was actually <laughs> the one that we were doing in the first place. So I'm going to fire up our version of Hyperspin, the one that we've been working on. And now when MAME loads, you'll be able to see in the bottom left hand corner, we should hopefully have a green, a light green going into dark green, surrounded by a black text. And it should be quite uniform. So let's give that a go and see if that actually has worked. Okay, Hyperspin's loaded up. Okay, classics like we we're on about. Now as you can see there's no text in this this bit here. However, when I go into it, we'll go over a look at games and there will be a text in the bottom left hand corner describing the game, year and make. So, there you go. So as I scroll through, it's got it all there. Nice. Now, I'm probably not going to stick with that, but I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do it. It's, it, it. I've shown you how to do it, so all you need to do is go through different systems and set it up for each system, basically. You can do that for all of your systems that you've got installed, uh, just to match your themes. Or you can leave it the way it is, it's just completely up to you. I just find that the easiest way to go through it and get the most uh, out of each system. So there you go, that's that bit. The next bit that I'm going to show you is when you're actually in an emulator and I don't know, you can scroll at this moment in time, the, the stage that we're up to is we can scroll through our hyperspin with our Xbox 360 controller. We can then play MAME at this moment in time with our Xbox 360 controller. However, what you cannot do at this moment in time, unless you've been clever so far, is actually exit out the emulator and go back to hyperspin, basically, without pressing the escape button, unless you've mapped that out somehow yourself. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a quick way to do that, the way that I do it, and you can change it however you want, but I'm going to show you a, a way that I always set it up anyway. So, involved again with this um, text file that I've shown you for the download, you've got exit system down here uh, and there's a little code underneath it. Now I'm going to explain that now. So exit out of there. Um, let's go back to our setup that we've been doing. So here we go, here's our hyperspin within my D drive, within my hyperspin folder and this time we want to go into hyperlaunch HQ. We set a shortcut there so we don't have to go through our folders. Hyperlaunch HQ is now loading up. And here we are. 
Here's our setup as far as we've got so far. So far we've only got main. We can start adding systems. I'm going to bring this out in the next few days or next week and so we should have a hell of a lot of systems set up by next week. However, this is just a quick tutorial. So where do we want to go? Where do we want to go? I think it's in general settings. So first of all we want to go to global in the pane. We want to go to global settings and then I believe it's under the controls tab. Yep, there we go. So we got a heading here called emulators and we got emulator, sorry, exit emulator key. At this moment in time, ours is set up or mine's set up. So when I press escape, it exit out. It ex exited, it exits out <laughs> of the emulator and returns back to hyperspin. Now, the whole reason I'm resetting it all up is so I don't need a keyboard. But at this moment in time, I've got no other options unless I can exit out the emulator itself. So, I want to change this so I can use an actual keyboard command. Now, you can do it yourself by choosing anything you want. Basically, this is the one you want to be changing. At the right hand side of it, you've got a little letter A and a key. So, I'll click on that, and so far in the system, we've got that. You press escape, and it's going to exit out. Now, we want to add another one because we want it so you can press escape, or we want to also add it so we can do something on our control pad to exit. So, I'm going to do plus. Now, in here, it's made another one so we can we can basically make a whole new one so eggs escapes gonna stay there but we want to add another one what we do here is we can do a single click so if we want to press a button on our joypad we can press that button and it's gonna go back that's easy enough the problem is that obviously if we click I don't know a lot of games take up our every button on our control pad is just the way they are so we don't want it so we just press that button and exit out otherwise you're in the middle of a game you press it by accident or you map it out and then you're a button short so <laughs> what I like to do is make sure it's at least two buttons pressed so you don't do it by accident and you're not losing yourself short of a button so the easiest way for me to do that or the way I've been doing it is to do the double or the triple or hold or a combination of them all to get you out of the uh, emulators. Now my exit script, the one that I use, is an Xbox 360 pad. I keep my finger on the uh, back button or the select button, whichever way it is on your joypad. Um, I keep my finger on the back button and then I press start twice. So it's a quick way of doing it is quite generic and to be honest unless I'm focusing on it I'm not really do that on purpose so I press the back and start twice that will then exit the emulator and bring me back to hyperspin now that saves me picking up the keyboard and pressing escape every time and it means that from now on I can pre play everything in hyperspin with my keyboard uh, sorry with my 360 pad all the way from launching hyperspin choosing a game playing the game and then exiting out of it and then choosing another game so as soon as I launch hyperspin I don't need a keyboard ever again so yeah it's an easy way of doing it so in there you can have a play of this uh, do whatever you want uh, do single buttons so you just press it or double button have a play there's lots of tips and tricks on this in the uh, forums but they're all hidden away so I'm going to share with you mine all you need to do is basically copy the text copy bring it over to the paste and then click the save key on the side there so now when I'm in an emulator I can keep my finger on the back button press start twice and that brings me out of hyperspin it sounds complicated but when you're actually in game it's quite easy just to press them buttons no problem and also you're not going to do it by accident you can do any combination you want but I've shared with you this anyway so there you go another tip and trick I'll try and bring a few more of these out for you but up to now that's what I've got for you thanks a lot guys and remember do not buy drives they're a waste of time they're run by mugs in um, attics with nothing better to do than rip money off you and you will end up spending three times the amount as what you would just buying a membership so all the best enjoy your weekend and goodbye